the the decline of gaming like i kind of want to watch this to see how many parallels he has with this versus the decline of blizzard okay here we go i've been playing video games ever since i was three years old when my yeah, parents substituted a game boy color in pokemon blue in place of a babysitter as i grew up there yeah, was so much accurate. to love about gaming I got to play and experience yeah. countless amazing titles and witness Those the industry the days, as man. it grew and evolved. After playing something evolved. like Oblivion or Bioshock, Halo 3, I would just kind of sit- Those were the good fucking days, man. Fucking 2005. 2004. You had quality games with almost no microtransactions or bullshit going on. No developers trying to put their own political agendas in video games, hardly. You just had video games. And it was great. Like, I was, I was so happy, man. Darren wondered, what's next? However, mm -hmm. in the last nine or so years, it feels like in many ways, yeah. the quality of video games, and especially AAA titles, has declined. The industry is always creating something new, innovative, and epic. Gaming as a medium has evolved very quickly in the 35 or so years it's been around. And while there are sure so has. many great aspects to love about this hobby, just consider this a more pessimistic take on the state of gaming. So what is it that has caused the decline of gaming? No, it's not these old flash cartoons, Money. but they did inspire the name. It's the same thing that ruins so Ooh, much of this beautiful it. world of ours. Insatiable greed. I yeah. activate Pot of Greed! Good thinking. This card allows me to implement microtransactions into Star Wars. When did Bobby Kotick get his own Yu-Gi-Oh card? That's crazy. Yeah, this guy's all over the place, man. I can't believe it. Battlefront 2. Just to clarify, these are my opinions based no, on the they're facts that I've facts, researched man. and observed. If <laughs> I get something fact. wrong, please feel free to let me know, which I'm sure you all will. For every negative thing that has happened to video games, yeah. you could argue an equally positive benefit has occurred. Did you get and that's a fair point. Yeah, we're waiting Greed for the is the driving force of this decline. But it gets tricky. Because greed, in this mm -hmm. case, takes on several forms. No, it's yep. not an overweight Italian man with a ridiculous mustache. It's something both subtle and straightforward. Yeah. Let's not waste any more time on a pleasant intro. Let's jump straight into this. Perceiving the decline, is it in our heads? It's challenging and overwhelming to tackle the core issues that plague a multi-billion dollar industry. What was the... What was the turning point, guys? Where was the turning point that you perceived the decline? EA Cata. FIFA. What do you think, McCall? Cata. Cataclysm? Yeah, around there. But what what was it? Was there a game that made you feel that way, or? Uh, no. It's just when I stopped being excited for games, cause all the shit I was looking at sucked dick. Yeah, there is that. That's true. That's very true. Uh, when free to play became the norm, that's actually a really good way to look at it. I like that a lot. With so many different companies, there developers, is, publishers, yeah. programmers spread all over the world, is it possible to categorize Ooh, and identify games. this decline? Yes! All we need to do is follow we'll the money. So let me just list some things you probably noticed and we'll elaborate on them down the line. One, okay. an increase in buggy, glitchy games. Big budget releases off- I like how the, the example of a buggy, glitchy game is immediately PUBG. Like, if you think of, like, Bubby, Bubby, fucking, Bubby, was it Bubby? No, Buggy. Buggy, glitchy game. Like, you have, like, this dog shit fucking game. And the worst part about PUBG is it was so bad it became good for how bad it was. Like, whenever you'd go behind a wall and you'd kill somebody, it was just, like, it was just something special about it. It felt good to do it. Games. Big budget releases often have a botched yeah. launch and are forced to rely on updates to fix their issues. Number two, an overabundance of remakes, remasters, and sequels. Number three, the corporatization of gaming, yep. the conduct of major companies, publishers, yep. and developers. And of course, number four, 
the obvious influx of RNG loot boxes being forced into every genre of game. And in including World of Warcraft. Um, I don't know, man. I think that... I think that the future of gaming lies actually with smaller developers. Because these larger developers with like these massive uh, shareholder goals, I, I think that's really what the future is. Because they don't have to be beholden to these uh, consumer unfriendly practices. Th that's at least like my take on it. I, I think that it's capitalism gone insane. It's not capitalism gone insane. It it's just people doing things for money. And, and I think that whenever you have, c video games are art. They are a creative pursuit. And whenever you pervert that and you convert that into something that's profit driven, you kill the art. And instead of art, you have something that's, I, I don't even know what it is. You Nobody fart. knows what it is. You have, what? Yeah, instead of art, you have fart. <laughs> Got him! That's oh, fucking brilliant. Got him. What? That's really smart. What the fuck? What? No, you accidentally said something really smart. It's like now you have. Okay, here's. Uh, I'll I'll go back to the video, but this is like the release cycle of video games now. So you have early access, beta, and then the game comes out. But what it really is is that early access is the demo, the beta is the alpha. And then the release of the game is the actual alpha. And then you have the beta come out in the first patch. And then a year later, whenever all the problems are fixed, that's whenever the game's actually released. That, that's the way game releases are now. Increasingly aggressive monetization schemes. Yeah. It could be that our own minds play a factor in this as well. Possibly we see the game industry as being worse because we had it so good in the past. That's true. Is all the disappointment we have caused simply by us growing older and more jaded? It's entirely uh... possible the negativity we associate with modern gaming is outweighing the more positive innovations that have been made. Games. I think that's partially true, and I think Classic WoW is a really good evidence of that, because if you go back and you look at Classic WoW, people see all the flaws and cracks and, uh, you know, inadequacies it has that they didn't see back then. And so I, I think that a component to it is actually rose-tinted goggles, but at the same time, you do, I, I don't know, I just feel like there were better, better quality games back then. And, and game developers now, they focus on things that people don't care about. Like, I, I, maybe I'm just speaking for myself here, but I actually don't care about having a motion capture character for God of War. Like, this is not, this is not something that adds value to me as a, uh, as a, as a consumer. Like, it, I, I don't care about this. This doesn't matter. Like, all, this entire, all of the people in that picture, their money is being, like, the, the developer's money is being lit on fire and thrown in the garbage. Because that product is that they just spent all that money adding value to something that doesn't have value to the individual. So I think this is the problem too, is that they're developing the game with with value that's not value perceived by the customer. Wrong, Andy? Really? So you guys actually care about this kind of stuff. This is a real opinion. Like it's a real question. Like I'm not saying like you guys were dumb. You guys care about this stuff? Oh, for me, dude, I don't care at all. Maybe I'm maybe I'm I'm weird, but like I don't care about the the super like the photorealistic graphics or any of that. I just want to play a fun game. Like that's to a certain degree. Yeah. I mean, yeah, of course, to a certain degree. Like graphics like RuneScape, for example, are too much. But for the most part, I don't really care about graphics a whole lot. Like I just want to play a, f a fun game. So like all the money they spend on making these like super complex uh super complex cinematics it just doesn't matter to me it just simply doesn't matter like i i'm it, it's a waste it's pearls before swine okay it doesn't matter games look better the stories more epic characters are represented so realistically animation vastly improved 
Yeah. My point is try not to become too overwhelmed with nostalgia for the glory days. And remember that your perception yep. plays a huge part in this decline. What do and don't you have a problem with? That's for you to figure out. But now that we got a solid base for this topic, let's dive deep into the decline of gaming. Complacency. Pleased, especially with oneself or one's merits. Advantages, situation. Often without awareness of some potential danger or defect. Self-satisfied. Complacency is probably the biggest deterrent to innovation and quality game design. The perfect- I actually, I, I agree with what he's saying in this, but I also don't agree because I think that the complacency is not, it's like a secondary, I, I think that the effect is the same, but he's attributing it to something that I don't think is necessarily true. I think that the effect is not complacency, but it's people wanting to make uh, an amount of money. That's why you have like now, they're redoing fucking Jurassic Park. They're redoing uh, Spider-Man again. They're redoing all these old movies because they know those movies will make money. And that's why you're not seeing the same amount. Of, and maybe I'm just like, I'm perceiving this, right? But like, to me, I, I perceive seeing a lot of remakes. I perceive seeing a lot of movies that I've already seen before, but they're just coming out again. And I think that the reason for that is because uh, they know they're going to be able to make and print a certain amount of money by making a new Superman movie, by printing a certain amount of money by making a new Spider-Man movie or whatever. And that's what I think kills innovation. And the complacency, I think, is just a secondary effect. Example is Valve. Once known for their unconventional methods of game design and their yeah. repertoire of critically acclaimed releases, so many instant Old classics that to this dude. day are viewed as some of the greatest People games of all time. People still play Team Fortress 2. But what about since then? <laughs> Looks like there's been a change of plans. Well, yeah, Valve has like not that. made a new game since Portal 2, eight years ago. Wait, and the what? last time they even launched a new IP was Left 4 Dead. That was 11 years ago. But let's take a quick look at the Gay. Yo, is that sh is that shit true? Alex? Oh, yo, boys, I fucking ordered that that fucking VR headset, this the fucking Valve, whatever the fuck it is, and they told me that shit was gonna be like seven weeks to get here. The index, whatever, it was like a thousand bucks, and I don't even like. I thought about the other day because my mom's like getting packages all the time, and I'm like, where the fuck is my box, man? Like, where's my shit? I think I got Scott. I think, I think Gavin scamazed me, man. I don't know what the fuck happened. Remaking old movie for new generation? Ah, oh, give me a break, dude. They're just remaking Spider Man every five years. Come on, it's not for a new generation, it's just for more money. Games they've launched since then. CSGO, yeah. a remake of Counter Strike Source, which was a remake yeah. of the original Counter Strike. Yeah. Dota 2, yeah. a remake of the Dota mod for Warcraft 3. Yeah. Counter Strike Online 2, Koreans only. Counter-Strike Nexon Zombies, free-to-play zombie shooter, no oh, thanks. That's cool. Left 4 Dead Survivors, Japanese only. Okay. The Lab, a series of eight VR minigames that was more or less just an experiment. Dota Underlords, a mobile version of Dota oh, Auto, Auto Chess. Chess. Yep. Do I need to elaborate? This is Predator the same company the that made Half-Life 2, and yet Valve is just content with developing these unremarkable titles? Yeah, you can really like sum that. up the disappointment gamers have had with this company in the artifact reveal. Everyone was so hyped to see what Valve was working on. It had been so many years since they came Fucking out with a new kick-ass game, man. and when they revealed it, everyone lost all interest. Yes. Bruh. Let me give you guys a little bit of a little bit of tips, game developers out there. Nobody gives a fuck about this stupid ass fucking card game, man. Like you think you're gonna get hyped up over over a virtual piece of cardboard? Like that's what these card games are. It's literally like I mean you've got one thing, right? It's like the audacity to expect people to get hyped up over cardboard. But then to get people hyped up over fake cardboard virtually, no. Just just no. Just fucking no. Boom, you stink! A Dota 2 card game. Wow. Now the question is, why did Valve stop making actual games? 
what happened to their ambition? Well, as of March 2015, Valve makes $18 million per month off Dota 2 alone. Valve is also, by ratio, one of the most profitable companies with the fewest employees in America, earning roughly $300,000 per employee. They make 30% Jesus. of every stale off Steam. They're just rolling in the moolah right now. The chimichanga. That's what I should do, man. Like, I should say, fuck this scream. Dude, Gavin's a billionaire, man. I think about that guy's a billionaire and he wears the same shirt every day. Like, he doesn't even give a fuck, man. Like, I, that's no reason. Yeah, dude, just fucking go, goes to work, man. Just, hey, what up, boys? And that's it. Like, I, I respect that, man. I, I do. I think that's great. Uh, buy a Lambo then? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, guy's a fucking legend. Like, that's what I should do. I, I should have, like, the, you know, you have the Epic Store, the Steam Store, and then, like, the Asmon Store. And that's where you have to buy games and, like, you put it up for money. That actually, that's actually really smart. I should do that. Have, like, a promotional system for the games and then allow that to kind of, like, cement itself as, like, legitimate. And then have people want to be on it for that. And then, like, you take part of their sales. It's actually really smart. The fuck? That's an original idea, too, by the way. I've never, uh, nobody's ever thought of making a system where you can uh, buy and sell games like that. Uh, that nobody saw that before. The gold bars. If you're yeah. making tons of money selling the same thing for seven years and you're a businessman, fuck it. Well, why would you stop? Yeah. Why would you take fuck the it. risk and time to develop and sell a brand new product? when you can simply maintain your current products and watch the profits get dumped straight into your bank account. Yep. Oh, hey, Bethesda, how's it going, buddy? Didn't see you there. You're still selling Skyrim? There's no <laughs> question that Valve fans will yep. eat up whatever new game they put they out, are. provided it's the type of game people want. As a consumer, you'd buy Portal 3, you'd buy yeah, Left 4 would. Dead 3, and you'd most certainly buy Half-Life 3. Long awaited and pretty much dead, Half-Life- Even I would buy Half-Life 3. Okay, even I would buy Half-Life 3, guys, and I know that sounds like a lot, but uh, even I would do it. I've never played Half-Life 1 or 2, and that, that's how serious I am about it. Uh, I mean, I don't know, guys. Like, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. It, it, it doesn't make sense to me that this kind of stuff happens, and... Uh, I don't know. It's just disappointing for me to see it. It's disappointing for me to fucking see it. We gotta make our own games, dude. You gotta make your own company. I don't know you if gotta I even want to make... I would only make games if I knew that my games had the capacity to ruin somebody's life. Because if I didn't think that I could ruin somebody's life with my game, it's not good enough to be worthy of that privilege. Like, I would want to have my game be so good that people would forsake and ruin their own lives in order to play it. Like, yeah, that's how it. you can tell if a game is good, by the way. If a game is good, you'll see CNN and ABC News specials about concerned parents with their children ruining their lives playing the game. You saw that with World of Warcraft, and you saw that with Fortnite. What's going to be the next game? You'll find out at 8 p.m. on Fox News. The game that makes people ruin their life. Think about it. That is the biggest advertisement you can possibly have for a video game. It's so good that I ruined my life for it. F3 is a perfect example of complacency. Uh, I got nothing to say about Half-Life. Despite the critical acclaim yeah, and unrelenting uh, hype for this title, yeah. you'd think Half-Life 3 would be at the top of Valve's priority list. But it never was. No. Nope. Instead, we're getting a VR game. And while it's cool they're finally making another Half-Life, all I can think is, what about the games that people want? You see, Valve and even some other companies need to- I don't care about uh, VR. Uh, I don't- it doesn't matter to me. Like, I was just gonna do it for stream content. I don't even want VR to be the meta. Like, I would rather have- I'd wait- Like, I, I wanna wait until they have, like, better programmed, like, kind of- better programmed like like uh, was it like the the neural uh fucking re receptors or something like that where they can actually make you literally feel like you're in the game because i, I don't i think the vr is just boring you know like yeah actually like sword art online basically like that's what i want and uh like full fucking neural immersion 
And until that happens, I'm not really going to give a shit about it. Like some guy walking around in his fucking mother's, you know, uh, living room with a stupid headset on. There, I'm sorry, but like nobody's ever going to get into that because you just look like a dipshit doing it. Like you just look like an idiot. Like have you ever, have you ever seen somebody with a VR headset? They look like fucking morons. Nobody wants to do that. Lessons from Bono. You know, don't ever stop trying to be in the limelight. Keep pushing forward to infinity and beyond. True. Bethesda and Rockstar are another two clear-cut so examples so of how complacency has creeped into the video game industry. Sure the has. undisputed masters of reselling the same product in as many forms possible. After Grand Theft Auto V, Rockstar basically did nothing except update the game and port their old games yep. to different platforms. Until five years later, they released Red Dead Redemption 2. Great game. Now again, I'm not That's saying these are bad I've games. I've never played it myself, but I actually do want to play it because I hear how good it is. But if you look back in the five years from 2001 to 2006, they were putting mm -hmm. out hot shit like GTA 3, Vice yep. City, Midnight Club 2, Manhunt, Red Dead Revolver, The Warriors, and Bully. Rockstar used to experiment and try new things, developing several IPs at a time and building a library of games to their name. But now yep. they've gotten complacent. Bethesda, meanwhile, had a five-year wait between Oblivion and Skyrim. That felt like forever, but oh my god, it was worth it. Skyrim yeah. was amazing. It flew off the shelves like crazy. Yeah. All my friends were playing it, and now it's been eight years People since Skyrim. People are going wild over And we Skyrim. basically have no People news, gameplay, or anything game. regarding Elder Scrolls VI. After New Vegas, it took Bethesda five years to come out with Fallout 4, a product that was very polarizing amongst the Fallout fan base. And then 76 releases. Isn't that, wasn't Fallout 76 not good? No, that was Fallout Boy. What do you mean? Fallout Boy's awesome. What's wrong with you? I, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. I was just joking, man. Good. The Fall Out Boy's fucking great. Do you see this decline? It's this complacency, this lack of desire to innovate and create new things it's a lie. that has led to some of our favorite game companies <laughs> releasing new games far more infrequently. Yeah, there you and go. And when they do, it's either something you don't care about or it's just yeah. another sequel. Despite nearly every single game company falling prey to complacency, almost none of this applies to Nintendo, who have stuck to hey! their roots and continue to evolve and release hey! new games that blow us away. Nintendo is who still doing that? things the old-fashioned way and making a shit ton of money, while these other yeah. game companies are doing things the easy way. God because if it's right. broken but makes a shitload of money, why fix it? That's right, dude. The abundance of remakes and That's remasters. That's fucking right. It's a fact that gaming has followed certain trends oh, throughout dude. the years. You had arcades where you paid quarters for entertainment. In the yeah. NES days, it was all about side-scrolling platformers. The SM dude, I'm so lucky that, like, whenever I was really young, I still got a chance to play with the old, the old fucking arcade machines, man. I, I was playing with the old fucking arcade machines at Chuck E. Cheese, dude. My mom would take me over there, and um, I would shoot people's food in Gauntlet. And I was so young, they thought I was doing it on accident. I wasn't. I did that shit on purpose, man. Fuck them. Yes, and Sega Genesis were all about graphics. Yep. Eventually, we had online gaming, rhythm games, battle royale. So many trends have come and gone. Some have stayed, I, I, I but occasionally... Say, I'm sorry, I'll pause again. I think Fortnite was an original and great game. Like, I, I actually, I unironically, yeah, I, I think Fortnite was an original and great game. Yeah. There it is. Only a certain style of game is perceived as no longer profitable or appealing to the mainstream. Like in the most, platformers, for instance. That's like RTS. No, like RTS. Like, when's the last time we had a good RTS game? Fucking never. Oh, wow, they're going to re-release the old Command and Conquers? Where's the new Command and Conquer? Like, what, what's going on with that? Like, there's hard... Like, racing games a little bit. There's no MMOs coming out anymore. Yeah. Fuck, oh, dude. Dude, that's Starcraft true. Starcraft 2. And Stronghold sucks, too. Like, ever since Stronghold Crusader, yeah. they've all sucked dick. Uh, I don't know. I mean, like, they... And, well, they re-released uh, Age of Empires 2, which was great. Um, yeah, I, I was happy about that. I bought that for my mom. I watched her play it for a while. Uh, but it's not Age of Empires 4. Oh, yeah, they are going to bring that out. I think people are going to play that. Like, I really think Age of Empires is going to sell well. It's going to make good money.
long fallen out of favor outside of Mario. I, 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 in this case, instead of developing a brand new game in a genre not, that's considered dead, companies will choose good. to remaster or remake their old ones. And would you look at that, they become hella popular. Yeah, look Who at that. Who would have thought? Spyro reignited an insane trilogy were incredible remasters. Yeah. And since those were so successful, don't you think people would be even more happy to see a brand new game starring the Purple Dragon or Lovable Bandicoot? But there's been no such announcement, aside from a remaster of Crash Team Racing. Wow. You can do pretty incredible things with a remake. Amazing. Sometimes it turns an outdated game into something completely new, effectively remaking it to be as good as you thought it was back then. Remakes are a great way for new gamers to experience the magic of the past, without the daunting task of playing something that looks like this. Or it can be a method for the developers oh, to add dude. on to their old project is that and Halo give it 3, some new man? bells and whistles. A remaster is cap- Dude, man, did you ever play Halo 3? Uh, I did, but it was never like a, a big thing for me. Like, oh I, I, I was never a big Halo player. Dude, Halo 3, like, Halo 2 for its time was much more groundbreaking than Halo, Halo 3. But Halo 3, I think, is objectively, like, fucking the best out of the series. Like, Halo 3 was fucking amazing, man. And, uh, like, objectively, I think Halo 3 is better than Halo 2, but for its time, Halo 2 is better than Halo 3 was for its time. Like, Halo Reach, man, I still think I still think Halo 3 is better. I do. Like, this new Age of Empires, look how much... I, I feel like almost all of the feedback from Age of Empires has all been, uh, has all been positive, too. ...capable of bringing old games up to speed with several quality of life changes and making yeah. it the definitive way to experience an old title. It can yep. be pretty awesome when they port something to a newer console so that you don't have to buy an old expensive copy of it, like Symphony of the Night and other Castlevania yep. games being ported to Xbox. That shit's cool. The problem arises when companies become more content to resell you their old games than they are to make new ones. It's become a meme how many different versions of Skyrim Bethesda has churned out. Legendary Edition, Skyrim yeah. Special Edition, Remastered, oh Skyrim on Switch, Wait, really? Skyrim now with mods. Sky Wait, holy shit. Edition, Remastered, Skyrim on Switch, Skyrim now. Wow. I actually like Skyrim. I think this is a good game. This is a very good game with mods skyrim for vr in april 2013 bethesda announced via their blog that they were moving on from skyrim and preparing Looks to good. work on other projects it's very good yeah that's a fucking laugh skyrim pinball edition really at moments some oh remasters God. just bank off your nostalgia they just and try don't to stop. parade their old game as something new by slapping an hd at the end of the title mm -hmm. all i'm saying is there weren't a whole lot of remakes or remasters what back on the N64, PlayStation, no. Xbox, PS2, or GameCube. And that's because they were focused on creating new games. Luigi In fact, Mansion. I can only think of one remaster from those consoles. Conquer Live and Reloaded, which made the game look so freaking sexy. The visuals Jesus. are still impressive to this day, and they even launched a brand new multiplayer mode that was just awesome. I remember but that. Nowadays, that was a good game. some remasters are just a shameless yeah. cash grab where you can see a side-by-side -side comparison and notice no difference. <laughs> but hey, at least they added some extra dirt on the glass for Bioshock Remastered. Yeah. Take my $40. Remember the That's what they do, man. original Wait. port of Dark Souls on Steam? Yeah, it was so fucking lazy and busted, they didn't even swap out the button prompts from the Xbox 360 version. I mean, holy shit. And then From Software comes out with Dark Souls Remastered, an actual, real port of the game. And yeah. they charge people $40 to play Dark Souls with a revitalized PvP community. And even DS Remastered didn't bother to fix several game-breaking glitches highlighted in this wonderful Inferno Plus video. Companies will also- uh, Dude, I, I never played the original Dark Souls, so I can't really speak to that. I, I, I think it's good. I, I, I mean, I think it's good. Um, there weren't that many games to remaster back then. Well, I, I mean, like, are you really trying to make an excuse for the fact that there's less creativity in development now? I feel like it's kind of, it's not really, is this really like a, a, a fucking, a, a, a hot take here? Yeah, come on.
take it a step further. EA turned Dungeon Keeper into a blatant pay-to-win dumpster fire mobile game. Yeah, something Activision like that. Activision not only released Modern Warfare Remastered, bundled with Infinite Warfare, but later yeah. added loot boxes and paid weapons into a game that didn't have those things in 2007. Some games like Sleeping Dogs, Last of Us, yeah. will come out with a remaster one or two years after it released. He doesn't even know. This is from 2019. He doesn't even know. Well, well, well. You expect me to believe technology advanced so far in that time span that a one-year-old game is now considered out of date? Uh, it's actually, nice to yeah. improve a game's stability, Basically, frame rate, that's and resolution. Right. But is all that really worth buying the exact same product again? My point is a lot of companies aren't willing to take risks anymore. It's disheartening. Yeah. To remember a time when the original Xbox was a haven of original, awesome, exclusive titles, and yeah. now the Xbox One doesn't even seem to be competing. This trend of lazy no, remasters and remakes brings me to my next point. What is it? Chasing trends. Early access. Every BR. Hey guys, please excuse the shitty quality of this section. My video is still in early access, and you can donate to my Patreon to help fund my willingness to sit at a computer and edit. In an effort to capitalize on whatever is... Yes, early access I think is bad, but... I think pre-ordering is worse than early access. I, I think pre-ordering is, is worse. Um, but it depends. Like, I, I'm okay. The problem with early access is this. Early access... That doesn't necessarily imply the game's going to change. It just means you get there earlier, right? You get to watch a movie like a day or two earlier before it releases. That's it. Like, yeah, it's just, I, I don't know, man. Like a lot of the problem with early access games is they stay in early access. That, that's really the fundamental issue. Currently most popular, plenty of game now. studios will just yeah. shamelessly rip off others or rush out some basic ass shell of a game. Remember like Lawbreakers? Of the storm. Man, didn't do so hot trying to copy Overwatch. So how about Boss Key Productions just copies Fortnite and PUBG and launches mm -hmm. shitty Battle Royale? That should bring in the money. Oh, this is like Radical Doc's favorite heights. game, dude. Good God. Oh, yep. wow, this Battle Royale craze Remember is that? really taken off. Let's release a brand new game that's completely fucked, abandon <laughs> our old one, and alienate our fan base. Yeah, it's about right. The calling to prove just how desperate some developers really are. Of course, it would take too much time and oh effort God, to fix dude. PUBG before porting it to Xbox, so they just, oh my God, burn it. Burn it all. No, they, well, they don't need to burn it. It'll burn your own PC. Um, but no, the, the, the game is PUBG. They released, they took PUBG out of early access before it was ready just so they could sell it for Christmas. Like, nobody can fucking convince me that's not what happened. Fuck that. Fuck that shit. Like, just selling a game whenever they knew for a fact that it was dog shit. Like, anybody that had played PUBG knew that it was a heaping, steaming pile of dick-ass cocks. But they put it out anyway. They somehow made it worse. It's kind of shocking how a company that made all the money in oh, King like Tut's me. Castle didn't use any of it to improve the game. Oh. Instead, it's they just so wanted bad. more. So and then bad. Titanfall made advanced movement popular. So bad. Well, shit, of course Call of Duty and Halo has to adapt that into their games, even yeah. if the developers don't understand what makes the movement good. Even See, if that's what I didn't like, man. I didn't like how they did loadouts with Halo 4, man. Like, it's not Halo in that way. I get that they were trying to do something new, and I was okay with it, but I think Halo 4 is a good example. Like, they fucking did loadouts. Like, this isn't COD. Like, this has never been in Halo. And then they had, like, these special abilities, like this right here. I, I don't know. It just, it wasn't... It, it's like Halo 4 wasn't that bad in a lot of ways, but, like, there are so many things where they just tried to make Halo 4 into high-tech Call of Duty, or Call of Duty within space. It compromises the design style and identity of their of franchises. Yeah, exactly. Just copy it. I don't care if it works, if it's unintuitive, janky, and sucks ass. Just copy them. Do yeah. what they're doing. A lot of these game series used to kind of just go their own way, mm -hmm. and I miss that. The term early yep. access has now been hijacked by companies who are too lazy to call their games complete. 
or admit they're never going to finish them. Yeah, it used to right. mean you had early access to the game, and often it was like that, an indie dude? title led by a small team yeah. that you understood didn't have the big budget some other games have. Yeah, and like Ashes of funding. Creation or something. But now all it means is the game is going to be a buggy mess, and you can't be mad at them because hey, it's, it's just early an access. early access. There it is. Even if they make billions of dollars, Blue Hole and Epic will continue to call Fortnite and PUBG early access God, titles. Dude. I love Then you PUBG. got all those shitty ass zombie survival games. My buddy brought over seven days to die one time, and after playing it for five minutes, I was like, dude, you got fucking scammed. You dude, I fucking, oh my god. Robin forced me to play this game with her. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god, dude. I literally, I was so mad about this. This is like five, like five years ago, right? Or like four years ago. It's ex-girlfriend, right? Um. I remember downloading it and I just like she was trying to dig a hole and I just ran I was trying to run into a cactus to kill my character so I had an excuse to not have to play the game anymore like I was so fucking tired of this game like I hated it so much it was the worst game ever you buy this shit from Jose in the back alley behind a strip club like what the fuck is this once yeah. esports really started to take off, developers started tailoring their games to be competitive. Everyone yep. wanted their product to break into esports territory, an e and that can now. really mess with the project's vision. When all you're worried about is chasing the most popular trends and the cash flow, yep. you get all these half-assed games releasing, and suddenly the desire to create something new is replaced mm -hmm. with the desire to copy others. Games as a service, updates, online only, broken launches, etc. The ability to patch a game after its release was one of the biggest revolutions in game development, allowing yep. teams to continue their work before go Allowing teams to begin their work after release. Going gold, bug fixes, balance updates, and more were now yeah. possible. Even when a game comes out and you buy it on launch day, it has an update because the developers are still working on it after they started shipping copies. The first time they had this happened, I remember it was with Halo 2 and they introduced like new maps. I think one of them was called like Sanctuary or something. And like back then, because not everybody had online access, you could go to GameStop and, and buy it, uh, the extra map packs and everything, or you could just download it off of Xbox Live. And that was a long fucking time ago, man. Uh, day one. Yeah, I still have the disc myself. And uh, day one DLC. Hey. Nowadays, you can fix, tweak, and save your ass Battle as a developer pass. with this luxury of post-launch support. Overwatch is a prime example of when it's utilized well. It needed several updates to become what it is today. Yeah. Without them, most people would have gotten bored of the game. The idea of constantly adding new content and features to engage players and keep them coming back is good for both the gamers and the companies. I'd say so. However, it's yeah. when the it's games a as thing. a service philosophy starts enveloping every stage of design, when developers rely too much on fixing the game and adding to it after launch, that we... I don't know if you guys ever think of a game like that, where like basically it gets released in an unfinished state, and then uh, like everybody kind of knows it's not finished, and then they hope by like maybe the first patch, by the first patch, maybe it'll be okay. And then, you know, second patch, second patch, maybe they're, you know, kind of turning things around. And by the third patch, things are all right. And that's where the developers really kind of have a hold on the product. But also by a third patch of the product, because they're not selling the box anymore, they're not making as much money, so they have to make a new product. And then in the new product, the the new product gets released again, and it's not finished, and there's like the patch cycle, and you know, like it's just, I, I don't know if you guys can think of a game. Yo, like that. what? That sounds like wow, dude. Uh, I don't know. I mean, like BFA was pretty good whenever it released, right? I mean, what do you mean, like as right armor? Remember that? That was cool. See gaming decline. Halo Five Guardians oh. straight out the gate had like a seven month plan of content. Why didn't you work that into the three years of development you had? You compare Spec Ops and Modern Warfare 2 and 3, and there's no mistake that everybody those prefers -like those versions to the 2019 version, where it now yeah. takes Infinity Ward one month to get two missions out. Ten years ago, <laughs> they launched a game with 23 of them. The difference yeah. is crystal clear in how games are developed. You look at something like KOTOR 2, 
Halo 2, and Smash Bros. Melee. Yeah, there it is. These games all had hellish development cycles that devoured the lives of the people working on them. Something like These that. heroes sacrificed time with their families just to complete the game when it was supposed to be done so yep. that we, the consumers, got the best product possible. Despite the many bugs, glitches, and general lack of polish in these three highly anticipated sequels, they turned out phenomenal because neither Obsidian, Bungie, or Nintendo could depend on simply Super fixing jumps. the game after the oh fact. My God. Not having that luxury put the pressure. Dude, press I used to do those all the time, man. You ever remember get back home with the boys? You're like, hey, dude, you want to do some super jumps on lockout? Like, yeah, dude. Yeah, let's do it, man. Like, that was so fucking fun, man. I, I loved it. Tron. Now with the luxury of post-launch support, compare the content from Halo 2 to the latest game, Guardians. At launch, Halo 5 had four game modes, the lowest in the series, and it took a whole year of updates to make Halo 5 a somewhat complete package. What Halo 2 Isn't accomplished... This what happened? In its Isn't this what happened with Halo 4 too? Where Halo 4 released without ranked mode? Yeah, didn't Halo 4 release without ranked mode or something like that? It was like something like really bad. Yeah, it, it's fucking ridiculous, man. Halo 4 was actually decent, though. I, I don't know. Three I, I didn't play it really hard. Back in 2004, Halo 5 needed an extra year after it was already out in 2015. Mm -hmm. But this isn't just exclusive to Halo. It happens to every game series where the gears stop turning and something as simple as launching a game in a playable state becomes an urban legend, a yeah. myth. Bad Company yeah, 2 you don't launches really do perfectly that. and works fine. Then Ooh. DICE drops Battlefield 3, 4, and Battlefront 2, which all had nightmarish issues mm -hmm. and simply didn't work. It gets so ridiculous to the point where you wonder if the games they put out are actually illegal because the product doesn't work as advertised. Then you got something like COD World War 2. <laughs> yeah, it's like what they said about Diablo 3, man. That's exactly it. Elon Musk is hacked. That's crazy. Or even the menus didn't That's work. That's crazy. You look dude. at how Mass Effect 1 came out back in 2007, pretty damn good. Ooh. Mass Effect Andromeda 10 years later somehow looked worse and was a glitch-ridden disaster. Diablo 1 and 2, absolute masterpieces. Something Diablo like that. 3 is coming out, people have been waiting over absolute a decade cock. to experience this game. It releases an Era 37. You yeah, can't play the game right. until Blizzard figures their shit out. Then you had Dead Island where the developers completely fucked up and released the wrong version of the game. How does that happen? SimCity was made to be always up- Hey, you know, Bill brought the wrong CD into work and uh, we was all drunk. So we just put one of them out there. It turns out it's the wrong CD. So uh, my bad, it is what it is online except you couldn't connect to EA's shitty ass servers. Uh -huh. Batman Arkham Knight was knowingly pushed out onto PC despite the publishers knowing it was a terrible port with Jesus, horrific frame dude. rate issues. I'm not saying every game from the glory days launched in a perfect state, but these unplayable disasters happen far less frequently. Since when at can the time, it, when's I was way more forgiving hover? of them. And then we arrive at the Master Chief Collection which was a testament to just how broken you could release a game and somehow not be investigated by the Better Business Bureau. Zach and I, like, the thing is, like, we bought, uh, we bought this and we played it last year. It was, like, whenever it came out. And the frame rate for replaying Halo 2, or it was Halo 1 or Halo 2, I forgot which one it was, was so bad. This atrocity was so unplayable, I'm surprised there was no class action lawsuit filed. The new cutscenes by Blur were jaw-dropping, but it's hardly any consolidation when nothing worked. <laughs> Menus were fucked. Game yep. glitches everywhere. Impossible to find games. Ranking Jesus, system constantly man. resetting. 343 that needed sucks. like three or four years to make MCC a yeah, consistently playable game. Ooh, that, three to four years map, after I bought the game, I was finally able to play it the way they promised I could. So Halo 2 Anniversary will contain the original Halo 2 multiplayer. What? Exactly as it shipped 10 years ago. What? Oh Though this my is God. a subjective point, take a look at these MMORPGs. World of Warcraft changed the gaming landscape Whoa. as we knew it and really gave rise to the games as a service philosophy with monthly subscriptions, mm -hmm. new expansions. It was a nice source of cash flow, and for players that enjoyed the game, it was the greatest thing ever. 
Wow has been consistently supported for like 15 years, and that's uh, great. But consistently here's supported? It's been consistently. An important point hardly ever mentioned. Warcraft yeah. as a series has been an MMORPG longer than it has been a real-time strategy. That's Despite actually, three wow. games with multiple yeah. expansions, the reason Warcraft 4 weird does it, not exist yeah is because WoW does. Similarly, yep. the reason why Knights of the Old Republic 3 does not mm -hmm. exist is because the Old Republic does. Elder Scrolls 6 does not exist yet because they've been working on Elder Scrolls Online. For better or yep. worse, these incredible series of games have converted to the games as a service philosophy. They've turned their backs on their roots. EA is infamous for shutting down- I, I'm not, I don't have a problem with that to an extent. I, like, and, and this is like kind of my, um, this is my preference, I guess. That, that's pretty much it. This is my preference. I don't really think that it's a big deal with uh, making games like an online evolving world. But this is also kind of... I'm coming from like an MMO player. I understand that a lot of people don't like what I like. So it's important to keep that in mind too. Made by a different studio? Yeah, I, I don't know. Several game studios, including Visceral, who were working on a single-player Star Wars game. Mm -hmm. But because single-player games can't really be made into a service, EA saw this venture as not as profitable and shut it down. It's actually surprising when something yep. like Jedi Fallen Order comes out with no caveats and is a genuinely great game. Oh, yeah. But in the six or so years, EA has had the rights Wasn't to this like Star Wars, but Dark Souls, kind of? Like, I remember this game was really popular for a while. Uh, I saw a lot of people play it. That's actually kind of cool. I might I might try this out sometime. I'm not really a big Star Wars fan, but it would be cool to try. It's a Star good game. Star Wars? Yeah. This is the first single player game they've put out. Flashback like to the that. early 2000s. Oh baby, Jedi Academy, Republic Commando, KOTOR 1 and 2, Episode 3 game, Lego yeah. Star Wars, Bounty yeah. Hunter, Obi-Wan, Force Unleashed, Battlefront 1 and 2, Empire at War. Star Wars games were off the fucking hook. But EA is just complacent now. We live in a time where the updates a game goes through are more impactful than the actual release. And it's this ship it now, fix it later it's mentality it. that's actually that is a really allowing good point. companies to churn out so many titles that suck straight ass when they come out. Yeah, a yeah, video game should ass. never be a gamble where the consumer doesn't know if it's going to function or not. Uh, Corporatization. It's not a gamble because you know it won't. Yeah, it's not a gamble. Like, you buy a game like that, you just assume that it's not going to work. Like, if you buy a game nowadays, you just bet on it not not working. And if you think that it's going to work and it works, that's great. But you should never expect that to happen. Yeah, very low Anti -consumer. expectations. Probably the just worst thing about bet the on decline of gaming is the corporatization of it. The game industry yeah. is becoming more and more controlled by some board of directors who don't see this hobby as you or I do. They aren't thinking, how can it, we make the best game? Because it's not a hobby for them. They just play the game. Or they, they just make the money. They just run the company. They don't, they don't play games. These are like the fucking grandpas that have like their grandchildren show them how to use a smartphone. These are the people that are on the board of directors for a video game company. They can't use a fucking smartphone. Impossible. How can we make our fans happy? They're thinking, how can we make the most money with the least amount of effort? Yeah. There are investors to please, deadlines to meet. Something game like development that. used to be just a bunch of nerds pooling their talents and creativity to make something incredible, yeah, something, something they like would want to play. Corporatization has been sucking the life and soul out of gaming, and this is illustrated by the complete lack of originality in the cover art of games. Check out this video by Nakey Jakey, it's really good. But it showcases a greater point the lack of soul. It'd be foolish to condemn all pre-order bonuses, microtransactions, DLC, etc. because only a Sith deals in absolutes. But I think I can almost condemn almost all pre-orders. Uh, I, I think pre-orders are, uh, pre-orders are not good, especially if you incentivize pre-orders. I, I, I don't, I don't like it. I think it's like kind of a consumer unfriendly practice. Like the only game I've ever pre-ordered is WoW. 
and that's the only game I ever will pre-order. And if I ever pre-order another game, I'm probably just being an idiot. Uh, it's just yeah, pre-order. It will basically it. it I don't. I think that it's unethical to do that because you're effectively incentivizing someone with a unique reward for paying for a product that they don't understand because it's not out yet. You're you're basically like you're that that's that's what it is. Like I, I don't know what to say. Like I'm I'm very upset about that. But you're creating an incentive for somebody to buy a product that's not even released yet. They're just buying it on, on the premise that it might be good. You're the consumer. What do you want? Do you want cool, meaningful, cosmetic Trusting unlockables developers? that showcase your yeah. accomplishments? Okay, what's the ideal way for the player to unlock them? Ask yourself this question first. Is this good for the player? Is it good for the player to unlock gameplay altering abilities or cosmetic items in monetized randomized loot boxes? Is that a form of progression and unlocks that is beneficial to the player? Of course not. So why do companies include it? Because the well-being of the consumer and the quality of the it's experience secondary. is secondary to what's most profitable. So true. That is so true what he just said. 100% so true. I knew it. See that guys? So true. Back during the 360, PS3, and Wii generation, players noticed there was a lot more downloadable content than the previous generation. In fact, mm -hmm. the GameCube didn't even connect to the internet. No. But now it seems Fuck like it. loot boxes are far more numerous. That's because companies realized DLC was only a one-time purchase. But what if there was a way to turn players into payers? Consistently doing that would yield high results. Then you got all those season packs. I wish they made loot boxes against the law. Like they just made it to where like you couldn't couldn't do them anymore. Like you couldn't have randomized loot boxes. Period. Like I I, I don't think they add any value to the game. Uh, like having a, a cash shop where you can buy things, I think is like okay. Uh, I don't like it, but it's okay. Um, but I I, I see no purpose in like sim simulated gambling. EU is doing it. Well, that's good, and I hope the U.S. does the same thing. But the problem is, like, a lot of the U.S. politicians, again, don't even know what Overwatch is. They don't know what a loot box is. Uh, they think it's probably something that has to do with pirates. Passes where companies want you to put up $50 based on a promise. As video games become more and more expensive to make, the price of a new release has stayed the same for decades. Mm -hmm. And while any business, big or small, needs to make a profit, the lengths some companies go to to monetize their games is absurd sometimes being so greedy to the point where they will compromise the design of their game. 343 and Creative Assembly went so far in this direction, crafting a mode specifically to integrate loot boxes into Halo Wars 2 and create a pay-to-win model. Madden what? and FIFA Ultimate Teams. Oh. Wow, those are so cool. Ruined by pay-to-win loot boxes. Yep. Battlefield 1 and 4 offering literal shortcuts through the progression system. Th that is what I really don't like is that like having cosmetics and stuff like that is really bad i don't like it because cosmetics indicate progression in games but whenever you can buy things that increase your experience that's where uh that's where i draw the line that's where i i i feel like that's too much so i'm crying about free games well these aren't really free games like for example like black desert has this and uh I, and i didn't like that at all Think about that Path for a second. The right. designers yeah, created the system of XP, how it is earned, how much it takes to unlock things, and then decided to monetize a way for players to skip it entirely. Bungie literally cutting and reselling parts of Destiny 1 and 2 as DLC, making shaders consumable so players will have to buy them again, was not a decision made for the benefit of the player. Forza no. 5 offering just as many payable cars as ones you earn in-game. The list How of convenient. DLC for The Sims alone How is fucking convenient. staggering. Middle Earth Shadow of War, a single player game, chose the loot box method of delivering- uh, Imagine how do you think Tolkien would fucking feel if he knew that his monsters were popping up in a fucking loot box, man. I guarantee you he would be pissed. He'd be fucking furious about that shit. Like, I, I don't care what the option is or anything. I hate these loot boxes. I think they're stupid. And I was more okay. I have gotten less okay with them over the years. 
Uh, before I was like, ah, eh, and now I'm like, nah. Yeah, exactly. Rewards to players. Dead Space 3 interrupting the game to ask you to buy more parts. Train Simulator 2015 oh offering over $4,000 oh of fucking DLC. God, dude. Purchasable weapons in Black Ops 4 giving people an advantage. Microsoft charging you to remove ads on Solitaire. Fucking microtransactions in Solitaire. Then for some games, it can- Is that real? Is that fucking real, dude? It is? Jesus, man, what a cock, man. What an absolute cock. It can get so bad that functional microtransactions become more important than a functional game. I couldn't get yep. into matches in COD World War II when it came out, but you bet your ass you I could buy, buy loot boxes. Lo yep. And then yep. Fallout 76. Wow. Easily one of the most embarrassing, blatant, empty cash grabs the industry mm -hmm. has ever seen. Do you, as a player, want to have sections of the video game you bought sealed into randomized crates that are paid for with real money? Hell no. There's always a better alternative. Titanfall 2 is the shining example. It might not make the most money, but there's no bullshit involved. What you see is what you get, and the game isn't any worse or better off because of it. Companies have tried seemingly every slimy, underhanded tactic to get you to pay just a bit more. Metal Gear Survive had the audacity to charge people $10 for an extra save slot, and Modern Warfare 2... Jesus, what? Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. Are, are you shitting me? This is what's gonna happen to us, man. They're gonna do this shit. I am just, I don't even know what the fuck to say about this, man. You had to grind for those extra custom class slots, but in recent games, you could just buy them. Like, is that where we're at now? Valve and Blue Hole opened up avenues to skin betting, selling and trading with other oh, players, I this which guy. leads to gambling websites, yeah. and the notorious shitlords like Team Martin and Pro Syndicate trying to make money off this and Josh OG infamous CSGO lotto scandal. The increasingly aggressive monetization of video games had gotten so out of hand that it attracted the attention of several world governments. I mean, if you look at those leaked patents by Activision, it tells you everything. The intent is right there. Yeah, they're Adhering just, to these patents, it's just about making money. That's what it's about. It, it, it's, a, it's about fucking making money. They're a company and they're about making money. That's what it's all about. That's what it's always been about, okay? And I get that, but whenever making money comes at the expense of the product, that's what the issue is. I want to make you as addicted as possible to spending yeah. money. They yeah. want to control you. That's why Bungie decided to throttle how much XP you got. I bet they wouldn't have done that if they weren't trying to sell me bright engrams. The decline in gaming has manifested in so Fuck, many different man. ways. And it hurts to talk about. Fuck, the man. The game industry I knew and loved has just gotten complacent with lazy titles, trend-chasing garbage, half-assed remasters, corporatization, over-monetization, and a lack of drive to create something new. Games as a service and early access become crutches for developers to lean on, and when fans get upset at how dysfunctional and empty their latest uh. releases, or wonder why game-breaking issues continue to exist, they use early access, or we're working on it, as their shield. Don't get me wrong, the good stuff is still out there, but you have to find it amongst all the noise. But with all this shit- I think that the way that this is ever gonna go away is if the consumers are actually stop- if they stop buying games like this. And the issue is that so many people still support products and systems like this that there's no way for it to go away. And I think they won't. Well, I, I know that, but like, that's what I'm saying is like, because like these companies, they target the dumbos. They're going after the big stupids. These are the people that just want to sit there and fucking, they just want to play their game and they don't care about anything else besides that. They just want to play their game. And uh, the super, you know, quote, normies or whatever you want to call them, 
uh, those are the audience that these developers are going after because those are the people that won't ask questions. Those are the people that won't complain about unfair practices. Those are the people that just play games so casually and without any interest really in like the health of the game that they just let them languish and die and the sad thing about it is that they're the ones that are actually enabling these consumer unfriendly practices to keep happening uh i'm very frustrated about it but there it is uh beta online because we're addicted well it's not just that uh, i i don't know man what is the monetization that you believe um, I think that generally if you're playing an online game, paying for a sub is what I would prefer to do or having like certain microtransactions. If it's a free game, I think it can have microtransactions, but there's no reason that any game should ever have loot boxes. Loot boxes are completely unnecessary to every single type of game. They add no value and they're purely negative. Well, it's changed for the worse in gaming. It's starting to feel like oh, a soulless shit. assembly line production. And the way companies treat their consumers okay, here we go. is making me lose faith in this industry. And that it's uploading. is how gaming has declined. Oh, fun. There it is. I think that's obviously a really good video. Uh, I really like this video a lot. I thought it was very well done. I think everything about it was uh, pretty accurate. Uh, I think also these companies are just trying to retread the same ground as they have before because it's easier for them and they make more money that way. I think consumer unfriendly practices are happening too often and fanboys allow it to happen and enable it.